What's up, guys? It's, uh, there's a lot of traffic today. Tuesday's usually the lightest traffic day. Very odd, very odd. Um, but, uh, so today is uh, Tuesday the 13th, which means that this will go up on uh, Wednesday the 14th. Uh, which is some of you might know is Valentine's Day. So that just so happens to work out very nicely because uh, today is exactly a year and a half since me and Emily were married and five and a half years since we started dating. And obviously after fucking, you know, a year of dating and slash or marriage, six months doesn't really mean anything, but it's just a nice conduit uh, and works out nicely for uh, what I want to do on today's vlog, uh, which is uh, basically uh, just talk about uh, why I love my wife. So here's a much more condensed version of the nonsense that I babbled out this morning, uh, which is to say uh, that these are my uh, top three of many reasons that I love my wife. Uh, the first of which um, is the quality that I admire most about her, which is her compassion. Uh, she is endlessly nice. She is endlessly compassionate to those who both do and do not deserve it. Um, and as someone who can be very sort of cold and calculating about things, uh, having her be a constant reminder that uh, I am in fact human and not a robot uh, is something that just fills me with endless amounts of joy. It's, it's the, like I said, it's the quality that I most admire and most love about her. Um, she, is, she is just an amazing individual. Uh, the second thing uh, that I love most about my wife is her whimsy. Uh, she has absolutely never lost any of her childhood wonder. She is uh, just the absolute most fun to be around, most whimsical person uh, that you could possibly meet. She's just a joy. And, you know, I think we all have our inner child that we let loose every so often. Uh, but Emily just has it to a degree that it's it's to the nth degree, right? It's constant, it's awesome, and it uh, ties into my third thing, which is that that woman is damn hilarious, and she never ceases to stop making me laugh and make others laugh, um, and she just has a certain uh, humor about her uh, that is very childlike in nature and is just incredible. And it's something that I hope I've never taken for granted. Um, because I absolutely, as you guys have probably seen by now, uh, love to play off of her and love to uh, make jokes together and laugh together. Um, and it's one of the things that I cherish most about our relationship is being able to have those things. And in conjunction with all three of those, uh, I am currently en route to uh, Kroger to pick up some pre-Valentine's Day stuff. Uh, and hopefully, if I anticipate this correctly, Emily will be asleep when I get home. And I'll be able to sneak in with all these various gifts and surprise her. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. So I should be able to see you guys inside of Kroger. <laughs> Flowers are definitely the easiest way to crush on Valentine's Day. If your significant other has a favorite type of flower, you can go with that. But if you haven't gotten to know them well enough yet, or are too disconnected from them to remember, roses are the classic, sexy option. The color of the rose is also extremely important, so here's a quick rundown of the main three. Red conveys a sense of love and means you have deep, passionate feelings for this person. Whereas pink is more flirtatious in nature, it might be best for a newly minted couple. Yellow generally indicates the roses were purchased as an obligation, and you probably could have just set the money on fire instead. Here's a little love guru pro tip. Always check the flowers closest to the counter, because those are the ones the florist actually cares about looking nice. Once you've selected the perfect bouquet, congratulations! 
you've completed step one. However, make sure you're never above a little in the moment inspiration. This next step is full of decadence and pleasure. It says both, I love you, sweetie, and are you sure about canceling that gym membership? That's right, we're talking chocolate. Now, you might be tempted by these festive boxes right up front, but don't be. These are part of the I forgot about Valentine's Day and I'm picking this up on the way home starter kit. Half of them are shit your grandmother wouldn't even eat and the other half is overpriced garbage. So take the extra five steps down the aisle to find a holiday themed treat they'll truly enjoy. We've got the main attractions, now we just need some accoutrements. I treat stuffed animals like my other favorite thing that's stuffed, crust. Too much of it can be a bad thing. So when trying to decide what to get your partner, just ask these two basic questions. Where am I going to keep this giant bastard? And will he replace me as the little spoon? Depending on your answer to these questions, you can pick the best fit. Cards can be a simple yet elegant way to have someone else express the feelings your commitment issues prevent you from expressing yourself. So make sure you take your time finding the perfect one. Some people might also tell you that cards are an impersonal corporate scam created to suck a few extra dollars out of helpless saps around the holidays, while these same people will also end up buying the most expensive fucking card on the shelf. Well, you now have everything you need for a pretty good present. For a truly transcendent experience, top tier valentines will get a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. They say presentation is everything, so be sure to make the bed first so the internet doesn't see what a horrible slob you really are. Next, you'll want to choose the focal point for your masterpiece. I chose this little guy because he's cute and cuddly. Let's call him Barry, because he loves you better than most. Don't forget to clear the room of any feline helpers before attempting to attach the balloon accent. <laughs> it seems like our friend Barry might have some ulterior motives here. Since we opted for the better chocolate, we can have a little more creativity with our display. Also, here's another Love Guru pro tip. That candy's gonna be gone in a single sitting, so hold on to that bag. It makes a great portable garbage can for leftover wrappers, shame, and regret. At this point, the flowers have probably started to wilt, so cut those stems and get them in the only vase that you own. Then place it on the table beside your work because you're too afraid that it's gonna spill everywhere. Finally, sign your card with some sentimental musings, Use a pet name that only means something to you, and get ready for the last. So, it turns out Emily wasn't asleep when I got home, so she's been awake this whole time, pretending to be asleep. You look back at the camera, doofus. Okay. Uh, so, we're about to go see what all my hard work has done. You can go. She's about terrified. to see it. Don't be terrified. Oh, <laughs> why? Happy uh, Valentine's Day slash one and a half years of marriage slash five and a half years of being together. Thanks. Yeah, you like it? Yeah. You like everything? Where'd you find this? That's at the Kroger's. Which one? The one that's up the street, yep. You like it? Yeah. Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs>